In the previous film, we added pitched, percussive, pulsing rhythms to the backbone of this track. And in this film, we're going to be adding a lead line to it. We're going to start with the Oliver Arnold's Composer Toolkit once more, this time using the Felt Grand Piano Patch, which is this sumptuously wonderful sound, a mixture of a muted grand piano and this sort of shimmering, spacious pad behind it, which just adds this incredibly cinematic quality to the sound. It sounds like this. And what we've got are these two mix elements, which of course are separately uh, playable. If I uh, mute the piano for a moment, we'll be left with just this pad, which is sitting in the background, which is... really beautifully atmospheric. And when we mix the piano back in, we have a chance to hear these two sounds together. So you can hear this really sort of blunted, muted sound, which then gives way to this incredibly beautiful pad. So let's just hear that uh, with the part that I've recorded for the track. I've just added a, uh, an octave at the top of that uh, note uh, the fourth time round, so we just get a little bit of extra detail. So doubling that part, we've got another instrument, this one from the Chrysalis Library, which has been developed by the composer and harpist Samuel Sim. And this is actually primarily a harp library. And as we saw with Leo Abraham's Enigma Library, he's taken harp recordings to a whole other place. In this particular library, what we've got is this incredibly sort of blunted, muted sound. And you can see that there are a number of mics, again, which can be blended individually. I'm using the ribbon mic and the condenser mic, but we could dial in other ones here and set a balance between the various source recordings that have been made to put this library together. And I've just copied the piano part down to this track so that the two things are playing together. Let's hear those now. Now you can hear this wonderful sort of trail of reverb as well. I'm using Valhalla's Shimmer uh, reverb on this sound, which is providing this incredibly big, spacious uh, sp uh, space, really, into which these two sounds are being fed. So if we run those two sounds with some of the sequence sounds that we looked at in the previous film, we get this. <laughs> So that's starting to fill up the lead sound really nicely, but we can always add a couple more sounds too. In the previous film, we saw how effective it was to combine synthesized sounds with acoustic sounds. And we're gonna do the same thing with a lead line now. We've got a piano and a harp providing acoustic sound sources, and now we're going to add a couple of synths to this line as well. The first synth part we're going to use to double the piano and harp combination that we've looked at is also from the eDNA Earth Library. And it's got really nice sort of pulsy quality to it, um, but it's gonna also double the notes of the hook nicely, I think. Sounds like this. So in the film, when we looked at the pulsing parts, the sequence parts, we found out a lot about the gate sequencer within the eDNA engine. You can hear it's working overtime here, really. Uh, what we've got is this very chopped sound. And because there's no definition at the front of the note, this sound wouldn't work as a sort of lead part in its own right. It just wouldn't cut through the mix. 
but you blend it with the piano and the harp and you get a very different result. So what I really like about this sound is the fact that it kind of takes over from the percussive start of each note. The piano and the harp provide the kind of pitchedness of the very beginning of each note, and then this gated uh, part sort of fills in the holes, shimmering away, and I think it will interact nicely with those sequenced parts of uh, the previous film as well. What I also wanted for the final section of the piece was to make sure that the whole hook just got a little bit bigger. From a frequency point of view, it got a bit brighter and a bit higher. So there's another lead synth part here as well, again using exactly the same notes, and this one sounds like this. So this sounds great because it has this incredibly wide kind of detune on it. It's got a very wide pitch base, which means it's going to sort of fill up the hook a little bit. And also, because it's a bit brighter, it's going to open up new frequency content in the end of the piece, just giving the hook a little bit of extra help, if you like, just filling it up and making it a bit brighter. Let's hear all four of those parts together. So let's take all of those lead parts and run them alongside the sequences uh, from the previous film. It's always nice to get some interaction between the different parts of your mix and what I really like here is that the sort of gated lead doubler sound which is pulsing away feels like it sort of belongs with some of the sequence parts but equally the pad feels like it's getting involved in the, the main lead line as well so we've got a really nice balance between those two sections now. So now we've got two sections of the mix come together at once. We've got the original pulse sequence parts and now we've got a hook line sitting over the top. What the track really needs now is some support. So in the next film, we're gonna be looking at adding drums and bass.